It's tough. beat me. There wasn't no hand when I ate a hamburger that morning. I ate too many pancakes. Boy beat me at my game. But for now, Hopkins is a mission as a middleweight. With two convincing knockout defenses, the champion sounds like a throwback fighter in the days when you defended your title, not protected. I'm trying to fight anybody that's claiming the impossible. That they the middleweight champion or they the real deal. And come on, let's do it. I mean, use me as the mop-up man. Change my name from execution to the mop-up man. I want to mop up the middleweight division like Marvin had in the day in the 80s. At 35, Bo James has finally made it to a world title fight. Persevering through a 10-year career, the smart and dedicated pro, he knows about survival. This Newark fireman aptly describes how he got here. Coming up the ladder the hard way, fighting tough guys, you know, which they don't expect me to beat, like Cesar Green and Walk and these guys. These guys were like top fighters that was, you know, in the rankings or whatever, but I, me, I was just Bo James, you know. Kid that was, you know, one suspect to beat these type of guys. But it's been a long road, but we finally made it to the, to the big one. Bo knows the heat will be on tonight. He's playing with fire as a huge underdog against the hard punching champion. And he probably is not expecting too much from me, you know. This guy just got to the race, you know. Who can he be, you know? He probably didn't have much with him coming to get a title tomorrow. I'm not the champion. Bo James is the champion. I'm coming to get his title. And that's how I got up for this fight. I'm not taking Bo James like Tonight, just got to put them, put them all, let it all go. This is night, I got to let everything go. I'm going to hold back nothing. I have to destroy Bo James quickly as possible. Take him out of his misery. What? And both fighters come into this one long and lean. Just a half a pound between the two. And James has that slight reach advantage. It is the IBF middleweight championship fight. Standing eight count is not in effect. Three knockdown rule is not in effect. You cannot be saved by the bell. And the scoring on the 10-point must scoring system. The strengths and the weaknesses of these two fighters. Here's the champ, and here's the blackboard. Brought to you by the new Speed Stick Gel. Tonight's boxing blackboard. The IBF champion is Bernard Hopkins. His strengths, he's a complete fighter who uses skillful pressure. Bernard's weaknesses in some fights, he grows lethargic. Perhaps because he has trouble changing speeds. He'll try to step on the gas against Bo James. His strengths are his good defense and effective combinations. Bo's weaknesses, he's had trouble advancing to the next level. Maybe because he lacks aggression. Will he be more assertive tonight? And the crowd is loud. They are on their feet. Bo James, a Newark fireman, and uh, he has the whole firehouse, and I think Newark here, coming down to Atlantic City to give him the support. Also, many, many of the fans of Bernard Hopkins coming over from Philadelphia, but you hear the chance of Bo, 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 and uh, they don't mean Riddick here tonight. We are ready for introduction, so let's go into the ring, and here is Ed Darien. Darien. We are live from the Coconut Ballroom here at Merv Griffin's Casino Resort here in Atlantic City, New Jersey, as Butch Lewis Productions and Budweiser, the king of beers, proudly present USA Tuesday Night Fight's main event. It's the IBF, Middleweight Championship of the World. It's approved by the New Jersey State Athletic Commission, the Honorable Larry Hazard, Senior Commissioner, the Honorable Jerry Gormley, Chairman, Members of the board, Gary Shaw and Stephen Katz, Esquire. The supervisor in charge for the IBF is Robert W. Lee, Jr. The president of the IBF is the Honorable Robert W. Lee, Sr. Our judges, Al DeVito, Miss Jean Williams, and Eugene Grant. In the ring at this time, the man in charge of the scheduled 12 round IBF Middleweight Championship and working his 70th world title fight, Rudy Battle. And now, my good friends, 
Introducing the principals. First, in the red corner, wearing the blue trunks with the white trim. He tipped in at an even 158 pounds. And this young man has 20 wins, six losses, one draw with 11 knockouts. He is currently ranked number 10 by the IBF of the world. Ladies and gentlemen, from Newark, New Jersey, here is the challenger, the fireman, William Bo James. James. And working in the blue corner, ladies and gentlemen, before I introduce that principal, a young man, the former light heavyweight champion of the world, as well as the heavyweight champion of the world, ladies and gentlemen, the one and only Michael Spinks. And now my friends, introducing in the blue corner, weighing in at 158 and one quarter pounds, he has 29 wins, two losses, one draw with 22 knockouts. He is wearing the black trunks with the gold trim. He is the IBF middleweight champion of the world from the Germantown section of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Bernard, the executioner, Hopkins. Hopkins. Okay, gentlemen, listen up. You both received the pre-fight instructions. I expect a clean break at all times. I'm looking forward to a clean fight. Any questions here? All right, let's have a nice, clean fight. Good luck to both of you. Let's take them up. Okay. The champion hearing the chance for the challenger. And it seems as if this is a road trip for Bernard Hopkins. All the Bo James fans are showing their support uh, for the heavy underdog in this middleweight world championship fight. It's been a long road for Bo James, but he is finally here and he faces arguably the best middleweight in the world right now, Bernard Hopkins. I know Lonnie Bradley uh, may have a word about that, and William Joppy and Keith Holmes, but right now Bernard Hopkins says what he wants to do is unify that middleweight division. Tonight he faces the 10th ranked fighter in the IBF in Bo James. A man who is 26 and 1. 20 victories, 6 defeats, and each of those 6 defeats have come by a split decision. So Bo James is a man who has never been down. Bernard Hopkins, a man who has 13 knockouts in the first round alone. And Bo James felt the power punching to the ribs in that first foray by Hopkins. And Bernard Hopkins goes right to work. He says his style in the ring is a boxing puncher. I do not throw unnecessary punches, Bernard says. His best shot is the right cross. William James says that he is a boxer. His best shot is the right hand, but he's not a slugger. There is Hopkins executing with that right hand. And he is going to work. Yeah, for him to get early down knockout in this fight would make a profound statement to the middleweight division. The seriousness of Bernard Hopkins. Serious about cleaning up the division. He says, I need some glamour names. I need some glamour fights. He says, it's not just about winning. It's the way you win that counts. I have to win big. Hopkins always feels that he wants people to come away from every one of his fights saying, man, that Bernard Hopkins is something else. Consummate professional, very disciplined in the ring. And he's taking on a tough test if that's what he wants to do tonight because Bo James is a very intelligent fighter in the ring. Guy who's in terrific condition, moves well, is uh, not susceptible to being knocked out. And right now he's trying to withstand the heavy first round storm, generally. 
That blows in with Bernard Hopkins. Yeah, Hopkins is a fast starter. Bo James said that he is a victim of bad decisions. And we talked about his split decisions, all six of his losses coming on the road. 26 and 1 with 11 KOs. He's number 10 in the world. Ranked by the IBF. Not, fighter. Oddly enough, we saw James uh, two fights ago when he lost the split decision to Ryan Morgan. Then in his next fight, he won against a fighter who was five and six. Now, he wasn't ranked before the Morgan fight, so he has a loss and a very easy win, and now he's ranked number 10 uh, up. Yeah, yeah. Into, into, into a world championship right. fight. The, uh, that fight, he said he thought he won seven out of ten rounds. I said that he had a stomach Oh, it is Hopkins pulling it off. And shot. James, though, comes right back. Everyone's tasting the power in the first round. From the IBF middleweight champion, Bernard Hopkins. T tasting the power, but expressionless going back to his corner. He is so focused in every fight that he goes to. Bo James. Not excited. Not excited, Bull. Surely wanted to key on that right hand. You see it caught with Bernard Hopkins. against the Bo James. Yeah, well, you need to be a big puncher. You need your opponents to advance, to run into your shots. But James did that this second round. He advanced a bit. Hopkins connected. Hopkins has the big power in the right. But he can't fight with both hands. Hopkins says he has learned when to box, when to punch, when to relax, and when to crank. He knows now it's a time to start cranking it up. Halfway through the second round in this scheduled 12-rounder. Moody battle. The separation. Bo James, a new experience. Coming off the canvas. James knew a lot about Bernard Hopkins, as we all do, coming into this fight. He said he saw him against Lipsy, against Nico Baptiste, against Roy Jones. This is the tough fighter fight plan for James. I got to out-hustle him. I must throw a lot of punches. A rough night. I, I'm expecting a tough fight tonight. It's no picnic. And I think when anybody fights Bernard Hopkins, he's going to show up in shape and ready to do battle. I don't know Hopkins talking about carrying himself like a champion. Took a shot at James Tony. But when he saw Tony in his last fight, here's a champion. He's talking about fighting Roy Jones. And he comes into the ring at 185 pounds. And that offended Bernard Hopkins as a champion. Yeah, Bernard Hopkins says, I can't afford to have a bad day. I'm a professional. I must be perfect every time out. Well, maybe he's just trying to get a fight with James Tony. Uh, Bernard, I think, wants to clean up the whole box in every division, every weight class, every uh, rating organization. He wants to be the only champion. <laughs> Pressure in that second round from Bo James, but here's what happens when you do that with Bernard Hopkins. You run into an overhand right. Bernard, power in that right hand. He also has power, as you mentioned, out on the left hook. Real solid fighter, Bernard Hopkins. Now he has control. You talk, about, you talk about the work ethic of Bernard Hopkins. How about Bo James? who for the last 10 years has tried to combine a professional boxing career with his job as a fireman in Newark. And also he works for RPS Road Packaging System. Delivers packaging, so he works there on the three days. He doesn't work in the post office. He works seven days a week, plus he trains 
five days a week. Oh, yeah, he takes fights at short notice. Other man's hometown, real road warrior. Tireless, dedicated. And uh, this fight, though, world title fight, took on a little bit of a different meaning because uh, Bo James actually took two weeks off vacation time to get ready for this fight. He has never taken off before a fight. Dante Bernard is really unloading here in this third round. A lot of pressure from him. And each one of these shots had bad intentions. That nice foot feint from him. A bolder coming out of position in mid-score. Experience talking from Hopkins. Bo James likes to sit out there, work from the outside, and actually set up counter shots. He certainly has a lot of shots to counter because Hopkins is very active, throwing a lot of punches, and they are scoring. And now that he has tasted the power of Hopkins, he may be content with just trying to survive, at least for the moment. Downstairs, the chin. No, oh. then downstairs. Hopkins knows where to put him. Oh, this is veteran talking. Bernard Hopkins does his talking with his hands. Yeah, and he has gained so much confidence as the champion. He lost his pro debut as a cruiser. He took a year and a half off to get back on the super middle and the middle. Then he won before losing the 12-round decision to Roy Jones. A fight that I thought was outstanding for him. Even though he lost the fight, I thought the focus in his face, I believe it, that fight really elevated him to another level. He said, Jones, too much speed. Roy came out to take charge. He admits he's a better boxer than I. I must fight him. And he hopes to be an opportunity to fight Roy Jones once again. That's what I want. I want to stand. You sit down. Just stand. You're trying to do it one or two punches. Work the combination off the jab. I want to snap your head going in front. This is a night of middleweights. No, uh, first that. fight. You like so Lloyd Ryan, yeah, the number four yeah. ranked middleweight in the IBF. Very impressive, winning his 15th straight fight. And, uh, in the crowd tonight, also some interested middleweights watching this IBF. World Championship fight. Take control of this fight. You're the boss in there. You're the boss in there. Bernard Hop. Uh, there is Simon Brown. I mean, uh, Otis Grant, who was ranked number two by the WBC. Simon Brown also somewhere in the audience is ranked number 11 by the WBC. They want shots with this guy. Well, they have to move the fight first. If they're having with the James, he got the shot coming off a loss in his last fight to Ron Morgan. In the attack, Bernard Hopkins, the 30-year-old out of Philadelphia. Six of his last seven wins have been by knockout, but keep in mind, 13 knockouts in the first round. of his 22 knockouts after the third round. So Bo James has uh, gotten by the danger zone of the first three, statistically. And fighting real strong in the first three rounds. Bo James in the fade later in the fight. But he did go down for the first time in his career, tasting the canvas in the second round. And the crowd really into this one. The Bo James fans are here from Newark. The Bernard Hopkins fans are here from Philadelphia. Watch your head, says Rudy Battle. Keep the punches up, says Battle. Watch your head. Keep punches up. It is going to be a busy night for Battle because James likes to tie up on the inside and fight from the outside. Hopkins likes to fight inside and move.
diving in. And Bo James completely on the defensive here, cannot get anything going. It's basically his defense first, offense second. Good uppercut. Try to fire back. Yeah, rare shots by James. Yeah, the single punches from him. James must put together the combination. And if you're going to stand in the end like that, you got to jab. Especially against a fighter like Hopkins. Bernard is too weak wise to stay out of the end of that. Hopkins content with getting on the inside, pounding with the body, looking around in there, looking for those ribs. Inside 10 seconds to go on the fourth, and we will pause for her from your real big people systems. Sweat rolling off the champion. It has been one-sided through the first four rounds. Bo James trying to get his composure. But uh, right now, Bernard Hopkins just in his face. And he just hasn't allowed Bo James a chance really to think in the ring. Like water on concrete. On top, just picking away shots. You vary the intensity on these punches. Fast start from him, and he's kept up the pressure. This is a kid in Hopkins who is in tremendous condition every fight out. So attuned to playing the part of a champion. Yeah, an impression. What we talked at the top of the show about impression, about how important that is. It's vital to a fighter like Hopkins who wants to be considered as one of the best pound-for-pound -pound fighters today. Every time out, you must give the impression that you are giving 100%. Carry yourself as a champion, and he's saying whether it's a championship fight or not. But that very much a throwback, a work habit. Good combination, a left hook followed by an uppercut. And he's one of those fighters who says, who when he says he will fight anybody, you tend to believe him. There's so many fighters who yeah. say that, but then uh, you know when they're backing away yeah. from a particular opponent. I think he definitely will. He came into this fight tonight wearing the sash on his robe from Sugar Ray Robinson when he fought Kid Gavilan in Philadelphia back in 1949. And he wants to bring that same intensity and ability in every time we want. It's the kind that Ray Robinson had, the great sugar man. Trying to step around, trying to work the angles. Hopkins. And he's also trying to get Bo to come after him. Bo has to advance. Remember what he did back in the second round when he got Bo running after him? Then Bernard could connect with it overhand right to go down with handle. Got to set him up again, walk him down, make him come after you. Many of the fighters, though, who have inspired Hopkins, as you say, Sugar Ray, also Holyfield, who uh, never stopped believing in himself when he came back to, to beat Riddick Bow. Um, Marvin Hagler, who cleaned up the middleweight division, unified it, exactly what Hopkins wants to do. We'll pause now for a word. With seconds to go. And uh, the former world champion moving himself into the middleweight picture. He's now hovering around the top 10 at 11 in the WBC. Scouting out Bernard Hopkins tonight. That would not be a bad matchup, would it? No, not at all. Simon Brown, real smart inside the ropes. Understands styles, understands changes. Good explosion, he was very good in, yep. in beating Glenwood Brown. And indicating uh, in that fight that there is still something left in the career of Simon Brown for those uh, who had doubted him at this point in his career.
Bernard Hopkins. Put Bo James down on the canvas in the second. Said he wanted to come out. Put him out quickly. But he's talking about a man who knows about survival in and out of the ring. Bo James, a Newark fireman. Yeah, he connected with the right hand. Did Bernard just there. Now we, we talked about the heavy traffic in the life of Bo James. A fireman works for a road packaging system, a fighter, and also in his spare time, in his spare time he is uh, in the National Guard. He is a sergeant, spends one week in a month, shortly he's going to be off uh, for a two-week uh, summer camp. Bo, do Bo doesn't know how to relax. He is uh, into it. I think he's wishing right now Bernard knew how to relax. No, no. Hopkins finding out like an executioner. That body shot hurting James. James though staying right there. Yeah, hanging in, tying up when he has to. Looking for the referee to break in. Now get back to the jab if you no James. Been well schooled on the left jab. That's something that served him well in his fight. And I walking right through him, even shaking his head. No. Coach. Yeah. And great James confidence. seconds of the sixth round scheduled for 12. On victory over, over Luis Davila. First fight here in this uh, the first casinos uh, up and going and they're getting into the fight game. And that was before Bernard Hopkins had turned pro. Hopkins first fight his pro debut October of 88 here at Resorts against Clinton Mitchell, who was 5 and 0. Hopkins turned pro as a cruiserweight, which just was not his weight. Although he had Mitchell down two times in the fight, but uh, Bernard ran out of gas and lost a four-round decision. He would then go on to win 22 straight before his loss to Roy Jones. And since the Jones fight, Hopkins now undefeated in his last eight fights including the capturing of the middleweight title. The fight against Jones was for this IBF middleweight championship. And then Hopkins had a shot against Segundo Mercado in Ecuador for the IBF title, which was only a 12 round draw. And then they rematch in Maryland, and Hopkins stopped Mercado in the seventh to win the title. And he has had two impressive defenses. A 24-second knockout over Steve Frank, which is the quickest knockout ever in a world middleweight title fight. And then in his last fight in March against 25-0, Joe Lipsy, Hopkins dispatching him in a hurry. Fourth round knockout. Really destroyed Lipsy. Tore him apart. In the opening round, like he did in this fight, he started extremely fast. Said, I still want to be the king of the ring, says Bernard Hopkins. He says, in every fight out, I still have to prove myself. We'll be seeing, uh, by the way, Segundo Mercado coming up. That's right. At the end of the month. In Philadelphia against uh, Joseph Tuanica. Good matchup at the Blue Horizon. And right now, John Brown and uh, Harold Warren in the main event. But it's always good at the Blue Horizon. John Brown, five foot two. Harold Warren comes off a great fight against uh, Tracy Patterson, not much taller. They even have his height. Yeah. Two, two of the biggest hearts in, in boxing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Two kids that really give 100% yeah. every time out. This round, it would appear that 
Hopkins trying to get James coming in a little bit more. Taking a step or two back. But this really has been vintage Bernard Hopkins. The fast start, and then in the middle rounds, he tends to take off a bit, and then tries to pick it up in the, in the stretch. And the poses in this fight. Fight. And right now, he is well on his way to doing this in his third defense of the IBF middleweight championship. Bo James has to come up with some surprises. Way behind, heading into this eighth round. James down in the second. And you see the look on his face trying to figure out how the heck am I going to crack through? This machine, Hopkins tonight. Got a minute gone by in round number eight. The 30 year old Hopkins in, in control. champ is with another champ watching intently Simon Brown who is uh, looking for a middleweight title Simon Bernard looks pretty sharp what do you think oh definitely Bernard looked very sharp he's very strong he's putting the pressure on um, Bo a lot and um, Bo is basically um, on defense a lot and that's why Bernard really can't get his punches to as good as he really wants to because Bur um, Bo is definitely going on a lot of defense and it's hard to um, get a guy out of there when they be on defense a lot, and that's what um, Bo is doing. But Bernard is definitely strong. He's, he's putting the pressure on. He's looking real good. But Simon, you know what the critics are going to say. They're going to say that Bernard's not able to knock out a fighter like Bo James. Can he do anything at this point to get KO? Oh, definitely. I, as you see, I think that, you know he probably will get it before the fight is over with. Um, because he. He need to put some more good body shot together, get this guy to bring his hand down, and then throw out at least three or four punches to the head. Um, that's what he needs to do. What is your rooting interest in this fight, son? Huh? My rooting really interest in this fight is that um, by watching um, Bernard Hopkins, hopefully down the line I would meet him some point down the line as soon as I get to fight this guy, um, Bradley, that's coming up on the 30th. Um, and hopefully that everything go well there, then I would definitely would like to fight Bernard Hopkins. Would that be Lonnie Bradley on the 30th? Right, definitely. It will be definitely be Lonnie Bradley on the 30th. All right, Al, this is a man that's got a title fight ahead of him, but he's saying Bernard Hopkins perhaps down the road. All right, champ. All right, champs. Eighth round coming to a close. Snap and get inside. When you get inside, fire those shots. One, two, three, four in the body. This is your fight. You're the man. You're the man. A little bit of displeasure from Blue Fisher. Yeah, and Blue Fisher should know. He wants more pressure, more combinations. Fisher, a former welterweight who boxed in the 40s and 50s. He lost a fight to Georgie Benton. A terrific teachers in boxing. Louie had a record of 13 and 5 as a pro fighter. And he has turned into a terrific trainer. He wants more combinations. Turn up the heat, says the Hopkins. Bo James has beaten Raphael Williams, Eric Holland. The split decision defeats the Julio Cesar Green. Otis Grant, he had Grant down in that fight. And then Ron Morgan. Closing in, Bernard Hopkins, some of his fans. Look at that pressure, looking at it as a possible moment to turn it up. Well, James is a boxer. And it is quite difficult for a boxer to win a lot of fights in the ocean. Terrific right uppercut from Hopkins. Hopkins really turning the pressure up. 
with a separation, 70th world title fight for Banner. Upstairs, one and a two. And Go James just wants to get out of this, oh, yeah. this round. He is hurt here in the ninth. Oh, yeah, just to hang in there with a fighter like Bernard. This pace takes a lot of guts. His fans certainly behind him. He wants, he wants him in front of him now. That's right. That's where take he needs him these, right now. Take some of these punches. Give me a shield here. Yeah, we'll see. See how long they'll be chanting then. They'll <laughs> 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 be saying, not bow, but no no no, 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 no. Stepping back now, Hopkins to admire his work. Yeah, and also trying to get Bo to come at him. Come here so I can hit you. And Bo knows better. Did that before. Oh, oh, staggering right hand. Bo's hurt again. He cannot be saved by the bell in any round if he goes down here. And he'll hold to try to dance out the final seconds of this night. Another big round for Hopkins. Vision. Senses. Sight. Sound. Six. James moves in, that's when he gets hit. When he moves forward, he catches shots like that. I think there were a couple of teeth that <laughs> flew out there. There it is again. Another shot from earlier in the round. The combinations. One punch sets the next for Bernard Hopkins. Good night from him. A lot of work for him. A lot of pressure. Performs every time out. At the same pace here in the tenth, we saw early in the fight, but he is also finding out uh, the difficulty of taking Bo James out. And that is one of my boxing record. That was one of my weaknesses. He goes along at the same speed. Yes, he is beating Bo James every round. He's really pouring it on, but he goes along the same speed. I think what he needs now to elevate him to an even higher level is an explosion. Now it's time for Bernard to explode. Really throw everything in your hand as fast as you can. This fight will be over. And he still may get it. He's got two rounds to work with. Really three. Three in this round. The latest knockout for Bernard Hopkins on his record in 22 knockouts has been the seventh round. He has never knocked out a fighter this late in a fight. Only five of his 22 knockouts have come after the third round. And now against a guy who is very difficult. Although a notch on the belt of Bernard Hopkins uh, just putting Bo James down back in the second round. First time that James has ever been down in 28 pro fights. James never stopped with the six defeats, all those split decision losses. I mean, here's a guy, Bo James, not that far away from being 27 at all. A guy who is not a full time fighter. As far as his gym work, champ, you know, if he's at the firehouse at night, he works out during the day. If he's at the firehouse during the day, he works out at night. I ask him, what happens if he's just too tired? He says he still goes to the gym. Too bad. All right. 
thing about it is you may, you may be too tired to even think about your opponent who is working out every day like Bernard does. That's when you get untired real quickly. That motivates you. But Texas his whole day, his whole week around getting ready for this fight. Side 20 seconds to go in the 10th scheduled 12 round IBF middleweight championship fight right here on USA's Tuesday night fights. Al Albert along with the champ and we will be back for round number 11 from resorts in Atlantic City. And I tell you uh, they have not let off through 10 rounds. No doubt who they're for. For Bo James. But I think Bo James has painted himself into a corner. Also, Bo James has never been this far in his pro career. He's been 10 on four different occasions, but never 12. And this is the 11th. Hopkins has had four 12 round fights. He beat Gilbert Baptiste. The USBA title, the loss against Roy Jones in 12. Beat Lupe Aquino in 12. And uh, Segundo Mercado, that 12 round draw. One gun, two minutes to go in round 11. What is Bernard Hopkins thinking now, uh, Sean? He says, it's not just about winning, it's winning. It's the way you win that count. I have to win big. Is this big enough? Well, he wanted to come into this fight and impress with a knockout. Remember, he had down the canvas in the second round, but it would seem that he's not going to get that this late in the fight. What he's thinking right now is... Hopkins right back on him, and Hopkins looking to end it here. Back on him, Bo James, and this one is stopped. Bo James sitting on the ropes. Rudy Battle seeing James doing anything to get away from the flying punches of Hopkins, who continued to slug away until the referee stepped in there, and Hopkins uh, comes up big tonight against a very tough customer in uh, Bo James guy who is uh, has been impossible to take out and he has faced the Otis Grants the Julio Cesar Greens hard punching Ron Morgans and hung right in there but uh, Bernard Hopkins does the job and retains his middleweight championship and also supplies us with tonight's Power Punch brought to you by Budweiser. Fresh, pure, natural, proud to be your bud. And uh, it looked as if... And two seconds of the 11th round, and a winner by a TKO. And still, the IBF middleweight champion of the world, Bernard, the executioner, Hopkins. Hopkins. Successful nice defense game. for Bernard Hopkins. He wins his 30th fight, and he is uh, now looking uh, forward to try to mop up the middleweight division and unify it. And for Bo James, at the age of 35, one of the nice guys in the sport of boxing, and for him a great thrill and something he'll always remember as he uh, did finally get to a world title shot. And that wraps it up. Here at Atlantic City for the champ, Sean O'Grady. I'm Al Albert uh, reminding you to join us next week, the replay. Azuka Quarty from Gun.